Hi, I'm Charlie Martinez, and with COVID-19 taking its toll on the on the markets, and it's been in the news, us economists wanted to get together and kind of talk about stuff that we all uh, consume, and that's chicken and, and other proteins. And so uh, we brought Jordan Chocolate in today to talk about the chicken market and the wholesale and the retail side. Jordan, if you would. Thanks, Charlie. It's a pleasure being here. Um, like most other uh, livestock cuts, chickens uh, taking a hit on prices as well. Um, but the good thing is from a, the poultry perspective is, you know, our poultry industry can adjust pretty quickly compared to our other industries like beef and pork. So, but I wanted to start out here, um, share my screen here with And I think that this uh, picture kind of sums it up about what's going on right now with COVID-19. We're kind of this in this holding pattern, trying to figure out what we're going to do at the store. We're missing our friends here, um, just like a flock of chickens. So um, hang in there. Hopefully we'll get through this together. So a graph that I want to show you here is really looking at price changes um, compared to the same time last year um, and different cuts of chicken, the wholesale level. And uh, one I wanted to highlight here is probably the one that's been hit the hardest and that's our wing prices. Um, you can see here at its lowest about three weeks ago, um, it was roughly 50% lower um, wholesale prices than um, this time last year. Um, as you may know, chicken wings are, are mostly a uh, eat away from home cut of chicken, right? We go and get uh, chicken wings, buffalo wings out at, the, out, out at the restaurants. And really, you typically see um, a huge seasonality and spike, you know, right around that March, March Madness, right? I'm, I'm from Kentucky, so we love, we love basketball and missing, missed March Madness. So, uh, that initially hurt um, going into COVID-19, but then we've seen the bottom out uh, here in April. But it, as you can see, we've had a slight uptick as uh, our poultry industry seems to quickly adjust. Um, we are placing less birds and uh, reducing the amount of birds slaughtered. Number of birds slaughtered is reduced as well as pounds being um, reduced uh, across the country. So we were seeing a slight uptick here in the last week or two, but um, given that wings are the major cut that is ate out um, at restaurants, it has seen the largest impact on um, because of COVID-19. But unlike uh, poultry and our other meat products, the egg industry has seen something really unique. And if you've been to the grocery store lately, um, you may or may not have seen eggs on the shelf. Um, and typically, at least here, what you do see is those um, specialty eggs. Um, so organic free range eggs that are special, you know, uh, have special um, packaging. Or you'll see uh, a package of maybe 48 eggs, four dozen. Okay. And so you may not be able to get your traditional dozen eggs. Well, what had happened was, you know, when COVID-19 hit um, and the panic buying occurred, everyone rushed out and bought eggs, right? And uh, like dairy and milk, fluid milk, it's a perishable item. And if you think about it, there's really no substitute for eggs, right? Unlike poultry meat and poultry beef and pork substitutes for each other. You're, if you're going to do baking and bake bread, bake muffins, whatever, if you don't have eggs, there's no substitute. And so what had happened was, um, if you think about it, roughly 60% of these eggs go into grocery stores already. So what does that mean? You would think that, okay, the 40, rest 40% goes into the food service sector, right? That is going to get redistributed like our other meats 
back into grocery stores. Well, that's not actually the case. If you think about eggs in shell, only about only 7% go directly to food service industries. The rest actually gets processed into liquid eggs. Okay. And so once they're processed broke, they can't go back. Right. So there was very, there was a very limited supply out there that could get redirected back into the grocery stores. Also there's with the egg industry, there's also some regulations that, uh, that hurdles that had to be um, fought through because of the high regulatory standards for eggs going into grocery stores. There is also in addition to that, a temporary shortage in packaging products. Those, those dozen egg packages are limited right now. Um, and so all of that combined, you saw a 300, almost a well, 250% increase in egg prices at the wholesale level. But again, very similar to fluid milk, eggs are also a loss product, loss leader. Okay. So many of our uh, consumers out there, especially if your larger box stores, probably didn't see a 250% increase in egg prices. Right. They just had a limited supply if you could get it. Um, so that price transmission wasn't there uh, to consumers. But as you can see, egg prices at the wholesale level are beginning to drop down about where they were um, uh, this time last year. So with that, I'll take any questions. I got a question, Jordan. Um, I'm, I'm out here on the High Plains in Amarillo and we don't have many chickens running around out here. About how far, or do you know, how far is, is an in-shell egg in the grocery store traveling before it gets to the grocery store? That may be something, I might've just thrown you under the bus, but. <laughs> yeah, you did, appreciate it. A long it. way, I, I, or what, what are we talking here? I, I, don't, I don't know that distance. Um, I'm not sure. So. Good question. If, if they're if they're moving that far, you, you know, we didn't ever really have a shortage of eggs here in Amarillo that I know of. So it's just interesting the way that that shakes out nationwide that we don't have egg production really anywhere within, I can't think of anywhere within, you know, two or 300 miles and we didn't ever have a shortage, but it seems as though a lot of other places they were facing a shortage like that. That could be an effect of, a panic buying situation and maybe a limited panic buying or just local or regional um, consumer patterns in purchasing eggs. Um, but we definitely saw that at least here locally um, and you're seeing it across the country on, on the limited supplies. I know it was mentioned in another video that we just did, but um you use the term loss leader for people who might be watching don't know what that is. Can you explain what a loss leader is? So what that is, is that's just when, um, let's just say for here, a Kroger or a large package store. And if prices like you saw increased at the wholesale level, that price won't be transmitted. AKA it's eight by the end at, by the company so that they don't have to increase um, prices to consumers, right? Um, and things like fluid milk, eggs, um, those are perishable products that get people to continue to come into the grocery store. And you may notice that where is milk and eggs located in your grocery store? It's not at the front of the store. It's all the way in the back. So you've got to walk through the store and that typically drives other purchases that you might not have gone into the grocery store. So it keeps those customers coming back to the store. And so you don't want to um, increase egg prices by 250% and not have those consumers coming into the store where they would on a regular basis. Very interesting. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. So, Go ahead, Doc. so it looks like we got, looks like we have, you know, as you showed, chicken prices, cut prices, uh, falling dramatically. Uh, 
you know, once, once restaurants started shutting down, we, it looks like we got uh, production chicks placed for grow out to, to decline pretty dramatically. Uh, you know, what, what do you think the path is for the future? They're certainly able to cut production quicker than cattle and hogs, uh, presumably able to ramp back up production quicker too. Uh, you know, what kind of, what do you got any thoughts on sort of some ripple effects going forward on the chicken side as they really cut production fast uh, in response to lower prices more so than I think than plants shutting down like in the other species? That, that's correct. We've seen a limited number of poultry processing plants shutting down, um, but what they are doing is, is slowing down production. Um, they are going to smaller birds. So your total poundage produced um, is reducing. And like you said, number of chicks placed in the barns dropped dramatically in response to this. And so what we're gonna potentially see, what we probably will see is lengthening of grow out times or time in between flocks for our poultry producers. Okay, hopefully that's not too lengthy where you have a huge loss um, at the farm level. But you think about, you know, the day in the life of a chicken, right? It's, you've got about, you know, depending on size, a 40 to 60 day time frame where that chicken's growing to go to get processed. So if we're reducing numbers of chicks placed now, I expect in the next, you know, two months, we'll see that production show. Um, and again, we can quickly place more chicks so depending on how the long, the length of this time frame that we have the reduced numbers of placements um, will indicate the lag or, or, um, or the drop in poundage produced in the next two months. So thinking ahead, it's May, June, July, August. We're going to have some tight wings for football season once we get the games going, aren't we? That, that could be – Possibly, but we could have – there's a lot of wings going on right now. So, I would encourage you, if you haven't pulled out a cookbook and looked at grilling chicken wings, we talked about, uh, you know, cuts of beef earlier and, and barbecuing and all that. There should be plenty of, of chicken wings available in bulk and lower prices. And so, uh, while that's not typically the cut that you cook at home, um, break out the cookbook. I know I, I've smoked a couple dozen wings here in the past week or two. Um, throw them on the smoker, fry them, all that good stuff. Cause you, I think you'll be able to get some good deals at the grocery store on some, on some chicken wings. Awesome. But, but yes, you could probably, and you could buy some now and put them in the freezer ready for football season. Hopefully. Hopefully we have football season. I, I agree. That is any other questions? If not, thank you for watching this video and we hope that you find it uh, helpful and uh, be sure to watch our other videos that we've done. Thank you.